Rewinding. Rewinding Kaya FM on FM Rewind. Sidebar with Cindy. Every Monday to Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. on Kaya FM 95.9. Sidebar with Cindy. On Kaya FM 95.9. Two minutes past seven on Kai FM 95.9, home of the Afropolitan. Welcome to Sidebar Cindy with me, Dr. Cindy Siwe Fansale. This evening we're speaking about divorce. This is the third part of the Talking Divorce series. And tonight we're asking, how deep does divorce impact children's well-being? Medical issues, sex and family, finance, parenting and emotional development. Sidebar with, Sidebar with Cindy. Every Monday to Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. on Kaya FM 95.9. Kaya FM 95.9, home of the Afropolitan. Sidebar Cindy with me, Dr. Cindy Fansale. You can listen to us on channel 861 on DSTV's Audio PK if you are out of Gauteng. Um, or you can listen to us on kayafm.ca.za and listen live. So this evening's topic is talking divorce. This is the month of July. And throughout the month of July on Wednesdays, we're talking about divorce. And I'll, I've been chatting to um, Tabang Laga. He's a clinical psychologist. In the first week, we spoke about um, what, what, what could be leading you to decide to divorce. And and then last week we spoke about divorce and finances. And tonight's show is about divorce and the impact it has on children. So I have Tabang back in studio, which is awesome. But I'm also joined by um, Ungatego Mungadi. She's an attorney and will be covering all the aspects about uh, involving children and divorce. So before we take your calls on 86 I'd like to welcome my guests to the studio. Uh, good evening. Uh, evening. Yeah, that's, that's Tabang and <laughs> So as I said, we're taking calls on 86 On social media, the um, hashtag is Sidebar Cindy and the other hashtag is Kaya FM Talk. So as a marriage divorce uh, dissolves, as a marriage dissolves, some parents find themselves asking questions like, um, should we stay together for the kids? Um, and, and, and I think a lot of people actually stay together for the kids because they're concerned by the impacts that the splits may have on the children. And um, in South Africa, in May 2018, Stats SA released stats that, re- that reported that black children are the most affected by divorce. I think in the previous weeks, some of the stats that we have read have shown that the, there's, a, there's an increase in the, in the number of black couples that are splitting up as compared to previously. There's a time when they were the, the lowest number or near the bottom, but now yes. it seems as if black couples are, are splitting up more. And figures also released also indicated that in 2016, divorces affected more than 10,000 black children um, compared to just over 1,200 um, Indian children. So divorce does hurt children, even grown ones. So tonight we're looking at all those aspects, um, you know, and we're asking you, you know, we're asking you, were you affected by your parents' divorce? You can call in and share your story on 86 on Saipod Cindy. Well, good, good evening, Tabang, and good evening, Katego, and thank you so much for joining me. Um, some opening statements from you, Tabang, about, about this very sensitive and touching topic. I think very sensitive and very, very important, and because it does, I mean, divorce does affect children I mean to, to put it very frankly um, so what we seek I suppose it's um, you, you seek adaptation it affects their idea of permanence mm-hmm. so children um, it's, there's this idea so you know, your parents the, the two people that made you the two people that you love separate you start wondering if anything in the world is permanence so you, you'll see it with people when they start dating or just thinking about starting and completing things they, they want about this idea of permanence uh, it does also impact on one's um, views on relationships you know you know uh, my mom did it I can also do it by myself or my dad does you get views like that it affects how one looks at um, relationships the other one is um, sometimes parents you know when parents divorce they they struggle because they struggle with each other they struggle to then take the message across to the children so then what then happens sometimes you find when when, when they've separated when it has happened that when children go to the one house uh, or, or when, then they are told something um, about the other one so then the, the parents fight through the children because they struggle to, to co-parent decide on the parenting plan decide on how they're going to work together probably and, and, and just also on a practical level I mean if your parents are separated and you are, you are living in different houses 
is maybe you have to see your your mother or father during holidays or uh, during half of the week or just just that move. So um, it does impact on one. Uh, it impact, impacts on one's uh, finances um, and, and a whole other things we can talk about. Um, so there is an impact. However, we can then maybe have a conversation about how to then minimize, I suppose, the damage. Mm. I know that um, in, in my daughter's school, um, I mean she's in grade four, but a lot of the kids in her class are going th- are going through this, and you know she'll be like, oh yeah, this week so and so is staying at her mom's house, oh next week she's going to her dad's house, and oh next week she's going to her granny's house, and and I'm thinking to myself, these kids come to school and they discuss all of these things. Yeah, and and kids kids thrive on routine, so uh, one of the best things that gives a child. Balance is just a, a, a life that has routine. I wake up at this time, I eat at this time, I go to school. This is what I do. So that that does an amazing job for children in their thinking and how they plan their lives, how they regulate their emotions. So if if a routine there, there isn't a proper routine or the routine um, is, is affected in a negative way, then children struggle. But do, I mean, you, then you do get s- situations with parents then in an abusive environments where then I mean w- where then it might be best for parents to not necessarily be together mm. so so um, and also just intimacy how because so the, one of the other maybe things we can talk about later is after you've divorced the the separation um, after you've divorced um, then you find someone else so mm-hmm. blended families how for girls actually a new partner then affects the rela- typically affects the relationship with the mom Mm. Uh, so then you get where young girls and clash with their moms or feel separated because there's a new partner. With fathers, what then they tend to do is sometimes then they neglect the family that they had because they see the mom and the children as a unit. Yeah. So if I'm not talking to you, then the children are not involved. And if I find someone else, then I start loving someone else and I tend to then neglect uh, my responsibilities and the children and that I, think I that's have. And, and that's, that, that's very common. That's, we hear about those um, issues quite commonly. Um, Katego, I mean, you're an attorney. Um, in terms of the law, right? What what where does what what does the law, what role does the law play in divorce, especially when it comes to children? Well, in terms of the law, um, when it comes to children, the Children's Act yes. is the one that governs divorce. Okay. So what the Children's Act would look at, they would look at the best interest of the child. So um, with the law will say we don't at this point we're not interested in mother, we're not interested in father, we're interested in what is going to be the best for the child. Okay. At this point or after the divorce or during the divorce proceedings, so um, a family advocate is always appointed for these cases to see that um, yes, you are divorcing whoever is applying for whether custody or guardianship or maintenance, whatever, is it in the best interest of the child? And that's where the law takes place. Okay. And does the child have a say at any stage of the proceedings? Normally, the children don't have a say at the stage of the proceedings. So um, the plaintiff, or whether it's the mother or the father, will say, I want to stay with the child and the father will do this. Or the father will say, I will take stay with the child, the mother will do this. So it's an agreement actually between the parents, okay. not the child. And and the family advocate would look at the agreement. If she feels that this agreement is a bit fishy, it does not um, look well for the child, that's when she will then kick in and come into play and say, I don't agree with this agreement. It's not in the best interest of the child. But generally, it's just an agreement between the parents. Okay. And say, say for example, I'm nominated as the parent that it's best if the kids stay with me, but I don't want that. What, what would the courts do in a case like that? It's, it's not a nomination per se. So, for instance, if you then are getting a divorce and you are instituting the divorce, you will then obviously suggest where you want the child to go. So you will say, I'm suggesting that the child stays with me or I'm suggesting that the t- child stays with uh, the, the father or whatever. So it's a, it's a decision that the parents make. If then that they can't make the decision, that's when the family advocate come. So it's not necessarily that someone nominates you guys, mm, the parents oh, themselves, yes, come together, talk, or, and if then that they can't agree, which it, it really happens, the family advocate uh, steps in. Okay. And would extended family ever be called in, like, has there ever been a case where the kids must not go and say go, 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 or with an aunt or an uncle? It happens, but hence we're saying that the best interests of the child mm-hmm. come in. So uh, Coco can come in and say, uh, I'm applying to have guardianship of the child because it's not safe for the child to be with the mother mm. or the father at this particular because of, okay. the, issues, because of the issues. The stru- yeah. Yeah, structure. So it's, it, it has to go then to the court to see is it really in the best of the child that the child is neither 
with the mother nor the father but with the grandparent. Okay, so if you've just joined us, you're listening to Nkatigo Mgati, she's an attorney, and I also have Tabang Laga, a clinical psychologist in studio, and we're speaking about divorce and the impact it has on children. This is part three of the Talking Divorce series that we've been running um, every Wednesday during the, the, the month of, of July. And we know that divorce hurts children. We know that divorce also hurts grown children. And um, there are many adults out there that um, are still suffering the repercussions of of having watched um, their parents um, divorce. Taban, coming back to you, um, the idea that you know I must stay with this person for the sake of my children. When when couples come to you and they put that on the table, um, what what's your what's your response generally? I don't, I don't know if that, that's a good thing because I mean you don't want to live a lie. Um, they, they, you know, children are very sensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if there's no love in the home. They can see it, no matter yeah. how much pretending you do. Yeah, because they the way, can see. Yeah, the way you're going to behave and relate to one another, and, and, and I mean, you've, you've, we, I've had par- parents who said their children have told them, if this is what a relationship is, then I don't want any of it, mm. because they can pick up that. But this house is cold; it's not a home. That you, you, the two of you, um, the way you relate to each other, it's not really the best way. Mm. And children, I've, I, I know, children have told their parents. But why don't you guys just separate? Because we can see that you're not happy. So um, you can't run a, um, a, a sham of a, of a relationship and, and expect the children to, to, to pick it up. Of course, there are practical considerations which people think about. You know, if we separate that, there are people who are separated, still live in the same house because they, they, they think about the house and the school fees and mm-hmm. it works practically. So we're not together. But um, maybe even if we stay in the same house, you know, people do, people do have some arrangements like okay. that. So, so um, but... Uh, but I think for me the, the, the idea is this it's, it's not um, you can't pretend um, in front of the children um, that something is working when it's not they, they will pick it up and that will cause all sorts of conflict in, in, inside them and I think if you are honest if you have open honest frank conversations about what's going on and then you can have a practical discussion about how you go, how you guys are going to then maintain this but I wouldn't recommend that people live a lie uh, for the sake of the children because what normally happens is that uh, people pretend and then yeah. the child goes to varsity and then because then the last one is in varsity then they separate yeah, so the, the nest yeah. is empty yeah the nest is empty and everything is cold yeah. one until you left and then then somebody in the Africa I've worked at university as well so you see that a lot that I don't understand my parents have been together for so long and why are they breaking up now but then I generally say they're waiting for you sure, to, 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 to leave the house to finish and now they, they say okay the last one is now gone so now we can separate mm-hmm. and, and in terms of disclosure Tabang so how much is too much information to tell a child or do you think you know both of you should sit down and just just tell the truth of what's going on what is what is too much information what is too little information yeah well i mean you can talk to children about anything um uh, but you you have to look at where they are their ages so children understand different things at different ages i think it's always best if the two of you uh, have that conversation with your children because it's important for them to see that uh, you are agreeing on something that it's not their fault because the other thing that children do is they think that you are separating because of me uh, because i've been a bad child and you are separating because of me and so that needs to be communicated to them by the two of you um so that they, they are not forced to also pick sides and they can ask the questions that they need to ask um that um so you you guys maybe don't love each other anymore are you fighting um is it my fault and so i think if the message if the two adults have a common understanding in with regards to what is in the best inter- interest of the child they can then then communicate that together with the children because it's also important for later on if you have a, a parenting plan or how you're going to decide to raise the children together that you have the same ideas that they don't go do one thing in one house they go oh, and do yes. something else in yeah. another house yeah. because then then mommy's mean and because dad. she always <laughs> she keeps the rules <laughs> and when you're always dad is always fun mm. so you, you do it together and you communicate the message together and you let the children ask the questions but you tell them you use the language that that's that's understandable at their language and it's not a a once-off conversation Mm -hmm. it's a conversation that happens often so as they grow 
you keep uh, enhancing and and deepening the conversation and giving them more detail. Uh, but you, things like um, we are separated because your dad had an affair or mm. things like that. So you shouldn't. The children shouldn't carry things that they, they, they are, their minds can't really handle. I see. Yeah. yeah. And, and what about gifts and uh, you, mean you mentioned the spoiling so one house there's gifts <laughs> and other house what about presents where, what if one parent they, their way of showing love during this this, this, this this divorce is by buying presents so you know when, when I'm at so and so's house there's playstations and there's a bicycle and then there's this every week and the other parent is not doing that would you would you intervene and and well, not, not intervene. What would you advise in a situation like that? Well, I would also recommend it's not in the best interest of the child if the child starts seeing splitting the parents. If, if, if so, because what typically happens is that the one who stays with the, with the children the most usually is the one trying to make them sleep at the right time, mm. eat proper meals, trying Wake to keep up, the structure. To school, now, then they visit this one for the holidays or on a weekend, and then it's fun, mm. right? And so they become manipulated. Exactly. So then they learn. Mm. And so, so the two parents, uh, I don't know what you think, Katika, that the two parents have to agree so that even if it's gifts, they, they communicate. Because if you don't communicate, your children are going to play you. Yeah. 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 And also, uh, you wouldn't want one parent to feel, to be made to feel as if I'm a or us, you know? True. That, that, yeah. That's a horrible feeling. Mm-hmm. The one parent is trying to make up for the divorce at the expense of another. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we normally see in children's court is that... Um, when two bulls fight, obviously it's always going to be, or two elephants fight, it's always going to be the grass mm. that, that, and, and that, that gets yeah. damaged. So you'll find that the structure that the child has always been known, it's now damaged. So what the child would do was try and manipulate the situation, and we've seen these things in court, whereby the child knows that there's a battle between one parent against the other. So I can use this to my advantage. When I go to this one parent, I say, the other parent says this about you, and they manipulate the situation. So you find that um, the conflict between the parents becomes even worse because now of, oh, because yeah, of the chatting that's happening because of the chatting that's oh, happening yes. then you find that the one parent now says I want to apply for full custody of this child I don't want the other parent to now have oh, contact okay, with because this child. Of, of the stuff that's being said yes. okay well let's take a call from Ule Rato she's calling us from Johannesburg um, good evening Ule Rato and welcome to Sidebar Cindy hi Cindy how are you good thank you um, so I, I have a question so I just went through a divorce about a year ago now. It was a really bitter divorce, right? But what I'm finding now is that my child um, doesn't have any relationship with the father. The father is refusing to be involved. So I don't know how to mean... I don't, I don't want to mean things, but in the same breath, I don't want my child to grow up without... There's a parenting plan um, that, that gives them full, full rights to the child, but... Yeah, a year later, the child still doesn't have any exposure to the father. The father doesn't isn't coming into the party. Okay, I'll ask Unka Tego to, to respond first. Yeah, that's a difficult one because the, you you just just mentioned that there is a parenting plan in play. So meaning that uh, a parenting plan is obviously an agreement that you guys came together, drafted together with or without a social worker to say uh, you will have contact or maintenance and how everything will work. But I think the difficult part with you is that the one party is not coming to play. And yeah. um, you, of course, can then uh, force him to have a relationship with the child because he does have all rights and responsibilities and duties given by the court to have access to this child but um he's obviously not coming to play um i think taiwan can then help yeah i think uh, i think what you said is quite helpful and the uh, so what i wanted to know is is he still angry at you um i i suppose i mean yeah, because I mean, look, he would randomly call, but I also don't want to introduce like instability to the child, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, the last time he saw the child was like in January, and then he will randomly call, I think last time was like in April again. And that isn't healthy for a child as well. So I don't know how to balance it out between being stern and saying, listen, if you want to see the child, you are going to have to be consistent. And also in the same breath, still say, okay, listen, at some point you're going to have to start seeing the child, especially now because she's only two. Yeah. Uh, it's better now than when she's much, when she's, she, when she's um, older. Yeah. yeah. So it, it goes back to that idea I was mentioning that usually so when you find the separation and that the parents are fighting, the, and the men typically then, because they're angry at the mother, then they start, not taking care of the child and what now 
one can't do is force the dad to have the relationship with the child. Yes. So I would, I would recommend that she, uh, she's still on, are you still online? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I would recommend that you just play your part, um, that you play your part, that you become the mom that you can. Um, and if the father, um, the, the father wants to um, come into the life of, of, of the child or, or be an active participant, that you allow that. And I know the dilemma with moms is that if he's not consistent, you know, some moms, it's very upsetting yeah. because you deal, so you, you have to deal with so much. And here comes this person uh, out of the blue. Now they want to have contact. And it's very frustrating for people. Yeah. But I would say uh, the mom should just do what she can. And then the child will learn to then have his or her own relationship with her father so if they have to learn that maybe my dad is a bit unreliable that's what unfortunately what the child has to learn Uh, but you just play your part and also if he tries to have contact with the child to not stop him um to to not because he maybe hasn't spoken um to the child for a while then you say oh but you because you didn't now i'm going to stop you because that that's going to also interfere with the child's relationship with the child uh, you you play your part and the child will learn what kind of person that their their father is and hopefully i'm just hoping that you'll somehow come around mm. um and so lastly i'd say what i found success is what happens is if both if both the mom and the dad can talk and get over their differences and agree okay we have issues but let's it's not let them out, filter yeah. that to the child i think when once that happens i found that parenting becomes a bit easier okay so Lord, i hope that yeah. was helpful for you and all the best the topic of discussion is um divorce and the impact it has on children as part of our series um talking divorce which is running through july every wednesday and in studio i have um tabang Plaga, clinical psychologist and i also have umkatego mgati an attorney so we're taking a call from ukani can you see calling us from johannesburg um good evening can and welcome to the show Dr. Cindy, thank you for having me. So I know that um, you were tweeting quite a bit about, um, you know, what happened in your life. You were 10 years old um, when you when you recommended that your parents, um, um, you know, divorce. Yeah, and that was like 10 years ago, actually. Mm. And I mean, I was 10 and all my friends' parents were getting divorced. And I thought it was a cool thing because my parents were fighting a lot. And I was like, it makes sense because my friends' parents are fighting a lot. My parents are fighting a lot. My friends' parents are getting divorced. Mom, dad, please get a divorce. And my parents were actually very taken aback because we had never discussed divorce. Mm. And they had assumed we would, hadn't seen them fighting. Until one day I was like, please, I'm begging you, get divorced. Mm. And, and like, no, we're going to work on our issues. And I kicked it, they didn't. And did they eventually divorce, Kanye? Yes, they did. My parents got divorced last year. Ten, finally. ten years later. Yeah, a whole ten years later. And when you look at, um, you know, when you look at your life now, um, how has that affected you? I think, personally, I always tell my mom that I don't want to get married because of the image of marriage that I've seen from my parents' relationship. Like, as um, I think the psychologist was saying earlier, Ubuti, there are kids who tell their parents, Ubuti, you know, see this image of marriage that I've seen, it's good. I'm like in trend with marriage. And so for me, that's how I've become now. I just, I despise marriage. I, I refuse to get married. I can't. And relationshiping, how, how's that going? It's weird because I don't, trust men because I the man I trusted my dad was able to betray my mom and so for me it's very sketchy yeah and Tabang had mentioned that and do you feel had it happened okay had the divorce happened 10 years ago when you're 10 years old as, as opposed to now when you're, twi- when you're 20 would the impact have been less had it happened sooner um, what do you think that's the last question I'm going to ask you before we move on um, can you yes definitely I think I would have been Okay, I would have like gotten used to it rather than to see them pretend Uguti, things are okay, and when things aren't okay, and then dra- drag on the process of them like finally separating. So yeah, it definitely would have been a lot different had it happened earlier. Had it happened, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing that, and also thank you for sharing your tweets um, on the timeline. Thank you for having me. Great. So we have Sydney calling us from Johannesburg. Good evening, Sydney, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Uh, 
I'd like to ask uh, in a in in particular question here. Yes. I'm currently going through a divorce. A very painful experience. But now, three children down the line, the two older ones, they left with the mom. Also, the, the last one, the, the, the younger one, who's constantly with me on weekends and sometimes during the week, but under very harsh conditions from the mother. Now, I was told by the magistrate that the law of custody to to fathers has been thrown out of the window. This was last week in Shabani, Rustenburg. Now, I hear you suddenly saying the parents have the, the right for custody to to share the children, I may, if I may say it that way. Just clarify that for me, because in the week I've got to go and attend, and you know, in my families I've got to to really consider the custody of the smaller one because he totally doesn't want to stay with mom. He's been daddy's boy since he was born. Yeah. So also with the other ones, they're still confused. They're still fresh in their mind. So just for the sake of a six-year-old, what do I do and how solid is that law that he has been thrown out of the window for fathers to take custody? Oh, okay. So, um, Sydney, I do not know of any law yet that um, father's rights have been thrown out of the window. So what I'm gathering from your facts is that you want to get a full guardianship of the child. So you now you want your child to remain full-time with you, right? Yes. yes now, but is, do you want the, the mother to have contact to the child or not? I, d- I don't have a problem with it. Yes. She has a problem with them seeing me because it's now eight months down the line to meet a divorce. I haven't seen the other two. Is, the, my is the divorce finalized? No, it's not yet. So we're still on the custody side. We haven't been given the date for the summons to be dealt with at the court. Yes, because it's two different issues. We have the divorce, uh-huh. Uh-huh. which is pending, and then now you want uh, guardianship of the child, which is another issue. So I'm well, not I, sure. I can't to her now in terms of that the other child must stay with me because we are not in talking terms and we, we, we cannot come to a conclusion of getting that sorted. Yes, so because... The problem is it's, 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 it's working on the child as this thing is proceeding, it's taking long. Now the child has to stay with the mom because the, the, the social workers and the, the, the magistrate said they should be with the, with the mother while we're still waiting for finalization to this. Yes. Now what, what damage does it do to the little mind of a six-year-old? Yes, unfortunately, the divorce is going to take long because there's not um, there's not any agreement between you and your spouse. So what's taking long is the is is the the minor children part in 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 the part of the divorce. There's a section for minor children, and I think that's the one that's delaying your divorce until that issue is resolved. It's going to be difficult for the both of you to divorce. So um, there has to be a, then a family advocate um, allocated to your case. I. I obviously don't know what was contained in the summons pertaining to the children, whether she said that you will share um, contact, care and guardianship between you two, or she said she wanted full custody. I'm not sure what is contained in the summons of divorce, but that issue has to be resolved between you two to say that um, let's get into a settlement agreement and agree what is going to happen pertaining to the children. The divorce will be faster. Thanks, Amelia. Pardon? Thanks, Amelia. You helped me. Okay. Thank you so much for calling and sharing that with us, Sydney. Thank you. Okay. We have Utumi on the line. Utumi is calling us from Johannesburg. Good evening, Utumi, and welcome to the show. Hello. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm okay. Thanks for asking. You know, the topic that you are currently discussing is quite an interesting topic. And um, as the previous caller had mentioned, uh, I will. I don't know how how true is it that uh, parents, the father's rights have been thrown out of the window, but. Somehow, somehow, we as fathers, we feel that uh, the law is somehow becoming biased towards women rather than having to protect men. So in my case, uh, I had a, if I may put it in that way, that I had a nice uh, pre-divorce, whereby everything was smooth and then we divorced and then the divorce was final. However, the problem became after the divorce whereby we now started to have little disputes uh, with uh, the child and now there's third parties that are being involved in the minor child and we now find ourselves back in court. Mm. But now how we find ourselves back in court is that there are now allegations 
being brought against uh, me as as the father that uh, I'm neglectful to to the child and 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 so now when we went to to the family advocate's uh, office just a couple of months back. Uh, when we got there, I, I now had to now submit uh, documents or documentations that I actually disputing the allegations that were brought against me. Because now the mother is bringing allegations, verbal, uh, how do I put them? verbal allegations. However, I'm now bringing a uh, affidavit from different parties that are now being said, this one said this, this one said this one did that. But now I'm bringing those documents. And I just wanted to uh, to ask, how uh, is in 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 the case of concluding a report, how um, is the family advocate and uh, the um, the social worker going to handle a, a situation whereby the the allegations brought in court are now based on in lies? Does the law also accommodate the fact that the child might if? If the court grants uh, full custody to the mother, will now then uh, the law take into consideration that the child might grow up in an environment whereby lies are going to be a normal thing for them to be able to to, to grow or to get away in situations? Okay. okay. Because one last uh, thing, because if you look at it, sometimes men get arrested for for rape. Mm whilst there is nothing that had happened in that sort. Someone was taught how to lie from a tender age, and now the mind gets damaged throughout their entire lives. Okay. Um, I think we need to go back to what I said at the beginning, that the court looks at the best interest of the child. And I think um, what happens is that uh, there's a misconception out there that uh, the court is always on the mother's side. So the fathers sit back and don't do anything about their, their situation. But the court is always fair in that they take into account everything that comes into play. They take into account the uh, evidence granted by the one parent, the evidence granted by the other parent, and of course all the reports by the clinical psychologists, family advocates, social workers, whoever needs to come into play that has interviewed you, your ex-spouse, and the child, and then they take in all of that to say that what is in the best interest of the child, whether to stay with the mother or to stay with the father and the court will um always look will would won't just say that um if we deny contact how will it affect the child that's that's where the family advocate and the social worker and the psychologist come into play they make reports to say that how it affects the child psychologically or socially and emotionally if then the child is not in contact with one parent and is only in contact with the other if full custody is given to one parent and the child can't see that so everything is taken into account when deciding what is the what is in the best interest of the child? Uh, but now, uh, how do you now decide after just one one interview? But it it it, it, it hasn't been decided upon, right? And that well, I, interview, I, I, I'd like to believe it from a psychologist. Maybe Taban can help. It's an extensive. Um, interview with the child and with the mother and with the father and comes and draws a conclusion from that. I do not know as to um, what happens in those sessions with psychologists and family advocate, but um, from those extensive interviews, they then make recommendations. And remember, family advocates and social workers only make recommendations. It's not that what we, what they say will be taken. It's just a recommendation from their side to say, this is what we feel from the interviews that we've done would be would be in the best interest of the child. And then it's up to the court to then decide, looking at all the factors, what is then best for the child. Okay. Okay, Timmy, are you happy with that? Um, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's a sufficient uh, response. However, now the concern that I, I had from my side was that if for, for argument's sake we, we now only have just one session one uh, 45 minute session whereby it's a, it's a back and forth between the father and the mother and considering that the child is a minor obviously the child will not be interviewed but now it's what the mother says or the father says out, out of that 45 session a uh, 45 minute session can, can you really determine where the best interest of the child lies 
Okay, to me, you know what we'll do? I'll take your details and I'll give you details to Tabang and to Unkatego um, and they'll be in touch with you because we'd like to take more calls. Okay. And we'll definitely get back to you because I, I can see that this is something that you need, um, you know, you need to get clarified properly, properly. Okay. Okay, then. Thanks for listening. All right, cool. Thank you. Before we take more calls, um, Anonymous says, I'm 26 and my parents are separating, still very new. I moved out of home almost four years ago to live with my husband. I never really had a relationship with my dad after moving out. Whatever communication we had was forced on by mom. I'm the oldest with the, and the youngest is 10. I'm trying so hard to be the mediator, self-imposed, but that's difficult considering that my dad and I only spoke through my mom. Should I force a relationship with my dad for the sake of mediating? So just a quick response for Anonymous. She's listening and this is what she's going through, Taba. I mean, she can try and have a relationship, but not necessarily force it. She can do as much as she can, but if the relationship is not working, then she can leave it at that. But I think a relationship is always worth trying. Uh, if the other party is willing to work on the relationship, then yes, then you can have something. But if not, um, then, then they can just leave it alone. But children, it helps to, to develop your own relationship with your own parent, if, even as an adult. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you for that. Okay, so taking calls. So before we take calls, Unka Dego had a comment. We had the last call about about the children and the courts and moms and dads and the, mis- the misconception that moms generally get... get um, um, custody of the kids, just to cor- just to clarify and make sure that everyone understands how custody works. Yeah. So what I was saying is that um, because there's such emotion involved in in trying to get what um, the one parent would want, of course, in terms of the child, um, emotions come to play. So um, one parent would feel that the court is not taking their side and taking the side of the other parent. But as I explained, the court will always look at all factors involved Mm -hmm. and decide what is in the best for the child. It might not be the best for you as parents, but the point of children's court is not to look at what's best for the parents, it's to look at what's best for the child. And... um, if the parents could, as Tabang said earlier on, could then come together and agree that um, for, for we, okay, we have separated, we don't get along anymore, but for the sake of the child, we should do one, two, three. Then you are also trying to act in the best interest of the child. But the moment that two personalities start clashing, uh, it's, it's, it's between now the parents and nobody looks at the child anymore and the court is trying to step into those shoes to say that I'm going to think on behalf of the child and not on behalf of the parents so it's not that they're taking one side over the other they're looking at the current situation current um, setup and seeing what is it that uh, how is it affecting the child and what's going to be the best for the child Okay. so if you've just tuned in you're listening to Sidebar Cindy with me Dr. Cindy Suye Fansel I'm in studio with um, Tabang Laka, clinical psychologist, and Ungadigom Gadi, an attorney, as we talk divorce and children. So we're going to take calls. We've got four calls lined up. Please keep it short so at least Tabang and Gadego get a chance to respond to each of you before we call it um, a night. So starting with Lebuhang, who's calling us from Kimpton Park. Lebuhang, good evening. Welcome to Sidebar, Cindy. Good evening. Thank you very much. Um, yes, my question. I had a friend, basically, um, whose parents um, divorced, and then after that, that dad. Um, ended up uh, going into a same-sex uh, relationship. So I've noted that basically, like, as we're talking now, there's so many gender roles, and I hear some people say, you know, I, I can't be the man now because the man in my life, my father was like this or that, and then they can't go into a relationship. So I wanted to ask the clinical psychologist over there to just, you know, if she could just give us some insight on any case had maybe regarding like the psychological impact of a child who's maybe whose parents were in a same sex relationship and have to be, um yeah, because when I saw my friend uh, after that I wasn't sure how she was taking it so I just thought maybe you could uh, give me a bit of insight. Okay, um so I suppose, I mean, if I'm understanding the question um, generally, is, uh, what I would say it would be, so you remember when, when people divorce, uh, people respond to something traumatic, so you, traumatic in different ways. So when, when, when the two people that you care about separate, they are now a mirage of responses that a person can have. Um, so if some people would, would 
try and make relationships work. Some people wouldn't want relationships. Some people would go into heterosexual relationships. Some people go, would go into homosexual relationships. Um, um, or it, it's just how a person um, responds. And it depends who the person is and their own orientation. So we can't say it just because a person's um, parents um, divorced and the person would, would then go and choose a certain... Um, kind of relationship but it, it just depends on who the person is and what resources they have and how they then I suppose decide to deal with the trauma of the relationship there is a trauma but uh, so I suppose the psychology would be this it would be the um, just the, the whole makeup of the person, who you are, to depend what kind of personality you have, your own sexual orientation, the circumstances that you find yourself in, and and the kind of divorce that you experience. From that, then you you will then form form your own response to it. Whether you you are an integrated person, an unintegrated person, so you just decide because of like I said, your personality, the circumstances, and how you are wired. Okay. So thank Lebuhang, you got that. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, thank you so much for calling. We go on to Anna. She's calling us from, okay, from around. Anna, thank you so much for calling. Hi, Dr. Sini. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, so I'm a DVC myself. Um, I got divorced. I think I was 28. Um, mm. It's been four years already. What I actually want to say is that um, noted from myself as mothers, we tend to be very selfish of how the fathers should participate in our kids' lives. We feel that as mothers, we should do everything. I should do. I'm the one who's going to take care of her. The father is never available. It's none of our business. More than anything else, if the child is younger, if the child wants the shared custody, given the shared custody, he must have the custody with you. If he decides to take the child to his grandmother, that's none of your business. The child will see their father for who they are. It's not your job to teach your child what is their father uh, made of, which is what I see from most of my peers. Because I'm the only one, um, actually, amongst my friends who are divorced that has the shared custody. And all they do is to tell these children how bad their fathers are. You know, we just need to step away from that. It's in the best interest of the child. Let the fathers be great. My daughter is eight years. When we got divorced, um, I think she was four years old then. And she's, we're having this shared custody. Sometimes she goes to her father. Sometimes she comes to me. Well, she's mostly with the grandmother, but it's okay. I get my time to be me. I get to do my own thing. So can we just be comfortable with the shared custody? It's in the best interest of our kids. Okay. Thank you for those for those comments, Anne, and thank you for sharing that. Okay, thank so moving you. on to uh, Natasha. Natasha's calling us from Johannesburg. Um, good evening, Natasha. Hi, good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Very well, thank you. I'm so happy that you guys have decided to do this panel. I listened to the previous caller. I think she's a young girl. Awaited her parents to divorce for... They, they only divorced like last year. 10 years ago, and she's really touched me because um, what concerns me there, here you have a young girl that is probably looking at how her mom and her dad address themselves in front of them and the bickering and the fighting, and yes, it does affect the children. I might not have been divorced, but I've been through three children and three fathers that have not been present in their children's lives. But one thing that I want to share with her, and I hope she's listening, is that Throughout everything that I went through with my children and having to raise the kids on their own and having to go to courts and fight. And, you know, the one magistrate said to me, Natasha, if you don't fight for your children, who else will fight for, for this? So I recommend, I, you know what, I am in the father that wants to spend time with his child. But I'm saying to the girl out there, do not give up on love. Do not give up on marriage. Because... 18 years down the line, I, I only got married five years ago. And I never, I also had the same feeling that after 25 years of abuse amongst my mom and my dad, I never wanted a man near me. I didn't trust men. I hated. And today, I'm a happily married woman, and I went through the same thing she went through. It took 25 years for my parents to do Then I want to just quickly comment on the gentleman that said something about custody. My husband currently now, when I met him, he had a divorce, he had a matter where the mom was also very bitter. And I took him to the court. And I promised him my husband wanted to give up because he says, I can't do this. It's mm. draining. 
And I had him motivated and said to him, baby, this will pay off one day. It mm-hmm. took us five years. And today, he gets his son on a regular basis. There's no bickering. There's no fighting. There is a court order that says you will have your son yeah. on your birthday, on Father's Day. You will have him every second weekend. Holidays, he belongs to you. So it feels like the son is not. Yes, he doesn't have full custody, but it's good enough for now. So yeah. to those two people, don't give up. Fight for what you know is right. Go to the court. As long as it takes, I promise you, it's worth it's it. always the, there's a fuck at the end of that rainbow that you're fighting. So that's why I just wanted to call for to say, because it really touched me. No, and she, she yeah. mustn't give up on marriage, and that guy, he must fight for his children. Mm. Okay. He will get custody of his kids. Thank you so much for that, Natasha. Siabonga, thank you very much. Okay, then, love. Have a good evening. You and too. thank you guys for having this topic. These fathers need it, yes. Definitely. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Well, that's really great insights from Unatasha. You know, experiences across the board with, with divorce. Well, we're coming to the end of the show. And um, before we close, I just like, I always like ending off with words of wisdom from, from the guests. So, Unkatego, just a few words from you. You're an attorney. You work in child's court. You see um, a lot of these cases on a daily basis. What would you like to say um, to the team? To the team, to the listeners. I'm thinking of my team. <laughs> my brain's really thinking of my team. To the listeners. I think I'm just going to take off from, from the last listener to say that uh, never give up. It's a fight worth having. And do not go in with the attitude that you're trying to prove something to your spouse or to your ex-spouse. or your yeah. Don't be coming to the situation uh, bitter and trying to prove a point. Come into the situation that I w- want to fight for my child. And that's it. Not for any other person, but for my child. Yeah, I think what 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 Natasha and Kateko said. I think you know life life is hard, and we don't need to do things that make it a bit more difficult. So if we've been through difficult situations, let us uh, try and and work out our situations in a way that it helps us move forward. So let us not give up. So the word I suppose would be fight. Um, just fight for what is right, what is fair, what is good for you, your your ex spouse and the children that when when things work together then you you all be healthier and better in the future. Mm. And and finding help. Um yeah. Katiko, before we go, where where's the where's the first port of call? Cool? If someone is, is 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 considering divorce or someone is going through it and they're stuck, where where where's the best place to, to get help? Um, it's not advertisement, but um, an attorney would help yeah. <laughs> in getting help if you're going through a divorce. Merely because if you have two attorneys involved, um, they help in the process of mediation, trying to make the divorce easier and faster for you without, um, because attorneys are not emotionally involved in whatever is going on. So uh, they can mediate uh, f- between you guys and make the process faster and easier. And in terms of anything concerning the children, you can always approach any magistrate court. It, it has a children's court for guidance, for contact, and uh, there are social workers there available to help you and to assist you in getting uh, your rights. Okay, and where would we find you? If someone wanted to speak to you specifically, where could we find you? Yes, I'm from Pelam Gadi and Associates Incorporated. is a practice situated in Kipton Park. You can find us on our website on Pelam Gadi and Associates Incorporated or call us on 011 395 Okay, so zero one one three nine five five zero one two. We'll make sure we put that out on social media. Um, and as for me, Cindy, this was a very insightful um, um, topic, very insightful show. I think I appreciate the fact that people can call in and share stuff that's really close to their hearts and, and painful. So we don't take that for granted. We really appreciate that because that's really what makes the show happen people sharing from their hearts and then getting information and advice from guests like Ungate Gomgati and um, Tabang Klaka. I'll be back tomorrow evening on Sidebar with Cindy and this is my Sidebar for tonight. Sidebar with Cindy. Every Monday to Thursday 7 to 8 p.m. on Kaya FM 95.9. Rewinding. Rewinding Kaya FM on FM Rewind. Visit kayafm.co.za for more.